the battle of the century begins. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, King Kong vs. Godzilla. This is the Godzilla figure. The motion picture screen beckons you to adventure that thrills the emotions with shock and terror. Two giant monsters converge on Japan for a colossal collision, but in the final bout, which one will emerge victorious? Brace yourself, it's cataclysmic, it's catastrophic, the titanic, terrifying battle between the mightiest monsters of all time, King Kong vs. Godzilla. To get this review underway, we're gonna first figure out how tall Godzilla is. I'll do two different dimensions for you. So starting with its feet, all the way up to the top of its head. King Kong versus Godzilla's Godzilla stands at a rather impressive 6.7 inches in height, which translates then to centimeters as being 17.2 centimeters tall. Now we're gonna go ahead and reset things, travel back in time to the beginning of our measurements here. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take Godzilla's tail fully extend it. There we go. And I'm going to measure from his tail to the end of its snout. And measuring that off, getting a measurement right to the very the very end of its nose. Godzilla from its tail to its nose. You're looking at a figure that is roughly again, this will be determined only by how much of a tail bend you decide to go with on your figure, but if you straighten everything out, you're looking at a figure that's lengthwise 12.2 inches long. Centimeters then, centimeters will work out to be 31 centimeters in length. The figure only technically comes with one accessory. I say technically, technically he does come with two. The other accessory is really just its tail that you have to plug into place. Some excessive force actually has to be applied to get the tail properly plunged into the socket section of its torso. But the other thing he comes included with is his heat ray blast, this exhausted amount of heat coming blasted out from the creature's mouth to whatever, again, it wants to destroy. Now, it sort of works the exact same way as all the other Godzilla figures that we've looked at. Um, there's a tab, or it's not so much a tab, there's a hole sort of on the end. You see that right on the end of his mouth, right at the very back there, basically where his tonsils would be. It also is shaped specifically to only fit the peg one way, sort of a half circle. So the rounded part actually has to go to the top. So see, that's the rounded part of the blast that's gonna plug into place. And instantly you've got yourself Godzilla breathing down his exhausted or his fiery exhaust out to again whatever he wants to destroy. Still I wish that uh, NECA eventually would release, maybe down the road they may release a Godzilla accessory pack. Certainly they've entertained the idea of doing accessory packs for the likes of Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger. Why not do something for Godzilla as well? I mean the very least if you have these little small cityscapes it would be an ideal placement to put uh, Godzilla in the middle of that. You could kind of just do like a rectangle and then just do like the buildings around the rectangle so that in theory you could still plank, plop Godzilla right in the middle of that. And then you would have some loose buildings that you could kind of put around it. Just an FYI. Um, but uh, that is the only accessory. I guess we'll quickly look at this. I'm certain we've gotten this accessory before the various times I've looked at Godzilla's in the past. This one does some strike some uh, r familiar resemblance to me. Um, it's primarily done in like a translucent, almost yellowish clear plastic. And then they've just frosted the tips, kind of like the 90s hair fashions when uh, InSync was really popular at the time. Everybody wanted to be the Timberlake, which I believe was just like a series of, it was ridiculous to people watch in the mall and sidetracking myself, but seeing all the kids walking around, the male teens walking around with their frosted tipped uh, blonde hair was, was just absolutely ridiculous. But anyways, that is what it looks like a bang up job because again like you can remove it and it's not detracting at all from the figure's head sculpt I mean, I mean other than really looking deep inside you could even just justify that that is the very back of its throat so it really doesn't show like something has to specifically be plugged in there like I said the back of the tail from this point on this section onward 
is a separate appliance. You have to take a ball joint that's at the end of this part and fit it into the socket that's on the end of this part. Um, I didn't actually require heating, although I was really close to the idea of submerging this part, this bottom part, into hot water in the hopes I could soften the socket, the ball joint here, and I could fit it in place. Ultimately, just a, a little bit of pressure, patience, and time later, I was able to get the tail in place. And uh, the tail, much like all the other Godzilla pieces, looks like it's sectioned in four different individual knuckles, each of which having their own ball joints. One right there, one right there, one right there, and yes, you guessed it, one right there. There's this one as well, but this one technically is part of the rest of its body when you get it out of packaging. So, I mean, really, you can get a fair bit of possibility. I mean, five knuckles, technically, when you think about it, you know, one, two, three, four, and then the one that carries over from the rest of its body. Let's have a look at its head. I would say even to look at this head sculpt could ideally be my favorite Godzilla that NECA has released. Now, that's a bold statement to make because NECA really has covered a lot of Godzilla figures. I wish I could actually have some of them presently available right now, but you know, the story as it usually goes with collectors, the ones that I didn't put on display recently uh, have been relegated to totes. I'll see if I can find those totes. One day, maybe I'll do it like a big Godzilla comparison video. But I do really like this head sculpt quite a bit. I don't want to say it's cute, but it does have a little bit more of a softer look to him. And ideally, it is one of my favorite Godzilla looks. Primarily here cast in a very dark, dark gray. It doesn't really look like there's a whole lot of extra paint that's been afforded to the figure. I don't really think it necessarily needs a lot of gray because really, or additional colors, because really this is the coloring that it is in the movie. Uh, of course, he does have the spiked uh, blades, the sharded blades of bone protruding out from its spine as it works all the way down to its tail, sort of giving you a lineup way to correctly line up the tail so everything fits in place. Of course, when you are moving the tail, it's going to throw off a little bit of that spinal paint. But again, really nice coloring here that they've done to it. Sort of they've speckled this in, but really, ideally, what they've done is just use the same plastic as the rest of the figure. The figure's plastic was probably molded in this like dark gray, and then they just kind of painted around the edges of it. Not frost tipping it, but certainly painted the outside edges there in almost this kind of creamy white color. Like I said, he doesn't really have a whole lot of coloring to him, but what he is afforded though is a fantastic sculpt. Little tiny Godzilla hands, these ones of which are actually poseable. You can move the hinges back and forth. It actually only controls three fingers. The thumb is left all on its own. The thumb also doesn't have any posability to it. Uh, same thing also with this hand as well. I feel the need to also mention just the other hand, uh, even though in theory, I mean, obviously most NECA pieces are symmetrical on articulation on either side. Sometimes there are instances like the McFarlane releases where it might only be on the one side. So I just felt the need to mention that, that there's possibility on this side as well. But again, I really love the head sculpt. Lots of coloring, what coloring is, is given to this particular figure. The interior of its mouth is given a almost dark, pink color. None of the teeth seem missed on their own independent paint. They're all done kind of like in a dark cream beige sort of coloring. Um, there is no reflection on Godzilla's eyes and yet I'm sure this video is almost conveying the idea that there is. It's just because they've added more of a shinier black paint to the eyeball area that's doing just a fantastic job of reflecting the light off of my studio lights here. Um, like I said, he's big. He is bulky most likely being utilized he's using a existing NECA body. I can't imagine that the, bo the body of this Godzilla is that much different than the ones that we've seen before. At the very least, maybe the, the, sp the fins, the spiked blades sticking out from a spinal uh, cord actually, maybe this might have been changed, but I can't imagine that most of this has been changed from uh, some of the other Godzilla figures. It's also too beneficial that this is a separate piece because this could have been molded differently depending on the Godzilla. And of course, fitting in the packaging, this would have to be a separate piece as well because it just simply wouldn't fit in a standard ultimate NECA box. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's possibility. He has a fair bit. You can count along with me if you want. If you feel like, oh, I really wasn't expecting this to be a school test. Okay, well, we don't have to count together. But I will show you. I'll show you. So his head hinges up and down. 
basically most if not all the posability I'm going to show you is all attacked via ball joints so you can imagine what with ball joints what you get afforded so for example each and every socket that is attached by a ball joint can basically do this head rotates all the way around as you can see I'm also rotating the neck inadvertently but the head rotates all the way around it hinges up and down it rocks back and forth and he does also have an open and closed mouth the neck is also the exact same idea it can rotate all the way around it can hinge back and forth up and down so really just between this socket and this socket here you can imagine the wide range of motion that you can get this particular Godzilla uh, the torso is also on its own ball joint it is a little bit more limited just because a lot of stuff wants to rub up and make connections with one another so unfortunately you can't really move the torso area that much more than really this uh, the arms hinge out they are also on ball joints these are about the only thing that is different on the figure it's these hinge joints that are in his in his elbow area they are a little on the stiff side but as you can see they bend back and forth and uh, you can also rotate these all the way around the hands also rotate everything sort of gets stuck to itself and like we've already discussed the fingers are independently hinged three fingers are hinged the legs are on a ball joint the lower leg is also on a ball joint and even the feet themselves might potentially be I believe are also a ball joint as well there is his feet ironically enough they give you peg holes on the undersides providing really that the tail is firmly planted it's not really ever a case where the figure feels like it's going to topple over but nonetheless it does give you peg holes on the undersides of his feet just in case then for the tail uh, we've already kind of looked at this anyways but I'll cover it off again ball joint there ball joint here ball joint here 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 and that's it unlike the xenomorphs also produced by NECA toys this one doesn't have a wire frame instead it utilizes the idea of just having these ball sockets as individual knuckle points in which the tail can bend it's more logically it makes more sense for this particular figure because the tail is so broad if you had put a wire frame in it it would be next to impossible to be able to bend the tail now what's there to say about the new King Kong versus Godzilla other than to say another successful entry from the folks over at NECA Toys sort of it's one of those things much like Gremlins hits a soft spot in my heart and it's usually one of those properties that immediately a new figure gets released into comic stores or retail store shelves I'm quick to run out and pick it up as quickly as I can there's something to be said for the Godzilla even though most if not all of them are utilizing same similar molds there's something rather charming about this rendition of Godzilla sort of for me it fits that iconic look of Godzilla maybe with this one over some of the others even though it does use utilize very similar mold components of course its head and some other things like its spine can be changed a little bit and of course much like in the films Godzilla doesn't drastically change that often every once in a while he does look very different from the previous Godzilla film but for me this is sort of like encapsulates the iconic look of Godzilla my, just my own personal opinion um, in the way of its accessories sadly he doesn't really come with much other than just his flame breath that's about it maybe down the road NECA toys will entertain the idea of giving us a diorama display base with a little small cityscape that you can have Godzilla you know walking through just a possible idea maybe a couple of helicopters okay I'm thinking ahead of myself here either way if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself some good news though my friends is that you can currently find this one available the King Kong vs Godzilla available in your local comic book stores and retail stores alike today we were having a look at new NECA toys this was the King Kong vs Godzilla and this was Godzilla another fantastic outing from NECA toys if you guys want to go back and just solely check say you're somebody that just is interested in Godzilla been waiting chomping at the bit waiting that this guy this reviewer would review another Godzilla and want to see if I've done anything else there's a Godzilla playlist just for the beast just for the king of the monsters himself or or if you guys also want to check out some other NECA reviews that I've done also there's a playlist just for NECA toys so there's a lot of stuff for you to feast your fancy on and certainly as well make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below that will guarantee you or somewhat guarantee you oh YouTube you're always changing somewhat guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel hopefully you'll never miss a beat as always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time